The movie opens with a visual of a security camera showing two people sitting in front of each other having a meal. The older woman is trying to calm the young girl down, assuring her that she's doing her best to get her out of the large room. Suddenly, the young girl jumps on the table and repeatedly stabs the woman in the eye with her utensils. The scene changes and we see a woman named Lee, who worked in the risk management unit of a genetic engineering company, driving to a rural site. During the drive, Lee is briefed about her upcoming case and ordered to assess while keeping the working staff in sight. She learns that the team she will be evaluating is a tightly bonded group that has been dedicated to the project for years and they may have deviated from the initial goal. Lee eventually reaches a gated mansion and must receive authorization to enter. Once she makes it up the driveway, Lee parks in front of the house and is greeted by Ted, the project manager. Picking up her luggage, Ted leads her into the house and shows her to her room, explaining all the amenities she has in her room. Without wasting any time, Lee tells Ted that she would like to meet everyone as soon as possible. Once she calls back in and makes her update to her supervisor, she warns to exhibit extreme caution and to preserve the asset by all means necessary. Following her phone call, Lee hears someone enter her room and investigates, only to discover Amy, the project's behaviorist, sitting on her bed. After a brief and awkward exchange, Amy reassures Lee that she can ask for anything and then leaves the room. Eager to explore the house, Lee descends the stairs and encounters Skip, the nutritionist and cook, preparing dinner in the kitchen. As they chat, Ted arrives and lets Lee know that she can speak to Kathy, who had been resting after the recent attack. Following Ted to another room, Lee sees Kathy in bed with her eyes bandaged. Disregarding Dr. Brenda's advice, Lee requests that everyone leave so she can talk to Kathy in private, assuring them she won't take long. Once alone, Kathy confides in Lee, admitting that the incident wasn't Morgan's fault, but her own, explaining that she had confused the girl. However, Lee corrects Kathy, informing her that Morgan wasn't a person, but rather a thing. Contradicting Lee's assumption, Kathy explains that Lee would understand once she meets Morgan. Telling her to feel better, Lee leaves the room and goes to meet Dr. Simon, the project's genetic engineer. Greeting her warmly and sitting her down next to him, Simon begins to explain Morgan's creation and its complications. Simon informs Lee that Morgan was their third specimen, as their two previous creations had died due to complications. He explains that they immediately recognized Morgan as very special, noting her alertness, responsiveness, and accelerated growth, which enabled her to walk and talk within just a month. Lee inquires about the recent incident in which Morgan stabbed Kathy in the eye. Simon clarifies that Morgan had become violent after her outside visits were halted. Satisfied with the information, Lee decides to meet Morgan, and the group proceeds to Morgan's residence, situated outside the main house. Approaching the glass barrier, separating the control center from Morgan's room, Lee begins to speak to the young girl, who seems disturbed by her recent action. After a brief interaction with Morgan, Lee informs her about her psych evaluation the following day and leaves. That evening, Lee and the entire staff come together for dinner, engaging in casual conversation about their lives and the project. As they chat, Dr. Louis returns from her trip and joins them at the table. Lee and Louis start conversing in Chinese, discussing the recent incident involving other prototypes who had attacked the staff, but Simon interrupts, explaining that those were primitive specimens, unlike Morgan, who was more advanced. Following dinner, Lee retreats to her room and starts reviewing the videos Morgan compiled over the months. Unable to sleep, she ventures downstairs and discovers Skip drinking on the porch. As they converse, Lee is taken aback to learn that Skip is the only staff member with reservations about Morgan. In a slightly inebriated state, Skip attempts to kiss Lee, but she promptly puts a stop to it and returns inside. Having witnessed the conversation, Amy goes to Morgan's room and encourages her to be her herself on the evaluation the following day. As they talk, a flashback is shown where Morgan and Amy are walking through the woods and find a severely hurt deer. Out of compassion for its suffering, Morgan breaks its neck. The next morning, the psychological evaluator, Alan, arrives to assess Morgan's mental condition. During their interaction, Simon becomes upset when Alan reduces Morgan to a mere machine, insisting that she is much more than that. When Alan realizes they intended to keep him on the same side of the glass, he refuses, stating that if he has to do that, then Morgan has already failed the evaluation. After being allowed to enter her room, Alan, the psychological evaluator, takes a seat in front of Morgan and begins asking her 
a series of questions. At first, Morgan responds calmly, but as the questions become more probing and serious, her composure starts to waver, and a subtle shift in her demeanor becomes apparent. As the interview progresses, Alan's line of questioning becomes increasingly intense, and he eventually broaches the topic of a hypothetical scenario in which he recommends Morgan's termination. This seems to trigger something in Morgan, and her previously composed facade shatters. In a sudden and violent outburst, she lunges at Alan, her teeth sinking into his neck with a ferocity that shocks everyone present. The room erupts into chaos as the staff rush to intervene, Darren rushing into Morgan's room with a tranquilizer gun. Realizing what was about to happen, Morgan evades Darren's shot and rushes outside as the alarm blares. Following her close behind, Lee shoots Morgan in the back with the tranquilizer and she passes out in Amy's arms. As Morgan regains consciousness, she finds herself strapped to a table in the sterile environment of the lab. Panic sets in as she takes in her surroundings, realizing that Darren and Brenda are present, their expressions a mix of concern and apprehension. The atmosphere in the room is a tense as the group grapples with the aftermath of Morgan's violent outburst. Darren and Brenda exchange worried glances, clearly unsure of how to proceed. It's in this moment of uncertainty that Lee steps forward, her voice steady as she announces that she has taken the initiative to contact corporate. Lee explains that she has informed the higher-ups about the situation and that a containment crew has been dispatched, scheduled to arrive at the facility first thing in the morning. Simon refuses, his voice tinged with desperation and defiance. He passionately argues that their work with Morgan is their life's work, and he firmly believes that nobody else possesses the understanding or capability to handle her with the same level of expertise and care. Lee's expression remains resolute as emphasizes that there is no longer a place for their work in this situation, and the project has reached its conclusion. Before Simon can voice his objections, Louis interjects and bluntly acknowledges the reality of their failure. After telling Simon to go back to the house, Brenda and Lou attempt to sedate Morgan as the young girl struggles, begging them not to kill her. Once Morgan is put to sleep, Louis goes back to the house and apologizes to Simon, but he closes his bedroom door, unwilling to talk to her. Back in the lab, Darren refuses to inject Morgan with the medication that would kill her and leaves the room with Brenda. Firm in her decision, Lee grabs the injections and heads over to Morgan to complete the task, but Ted attempts to stop her, telling her that he can't allow her to do this. Lee swiftly lunges at Ted, seizing him and pulling out a gun, but before she can take any action, Amy intervenes, firing a tranquilizer dart at Lee. As Lee regains consciousness, she finds herself in Morgan's room and feels disoriented from the effects of the tranquilizer and hears Ted's voice coming through the intercom. Despite her demand to be released, Ted adamantly refuses, asserting that they deserve an opportunity to present their work to corporate. Despite Lee's attempts to persuade him that corporate representatives could arrive at any moment, Ted Ted remains resolute in his decision. Meanwhile, Brenda, Amy, and Darren hastily gather their belongings, trying to rouse Lee so they can flee with her. Upon regaining consciousness and feeling a sense of betrayal by her friends, Morgan lashes out, ultimately killing Darren and Ted. Seeing Lee in her room, Morgan tells her that these people were not her friends since they tried to kill her, acknowledging Amy as the only person who cared about her. Amy and Lee run out of the facility and see Skip coming toward them, telling Amy that that she needs to get Morgan inside. Although Amy screams for Skip to not go inside, he ignores her and rushes inside. Amy catches Brenda trying to drive away and stops her, watching in horror as Morgan bashes Brenda's head in. With a calm tone, Morgan tells Amy to get inside the car, informing her that she is going to say goodbye to Louis. Heading inside the house, Morgan finds Kathy roaming around and kills her by breaking her neck. She then goes up to Louis's room and finds her recording a video, briefing corporate that Morgan was a failure. Walking into the room, Morgan says goodbye to the woman she considered her mother, kisses her on the forehead, and suffocates her to death. Lee successfully breaks free from her confinement by climbing through the window and encounters Skip, who urgently tries to caution her about Morgan. Instructing Skip to fetch his rifle, she ventures into the house and discovers Simon in his room, where he has tragically taken his own life, succumbing to over overwhelming despair. As Lee continues to explore the house, she is caught off guard by Morgan, who launches a sudden attack. The two engage in a fierce struggle, with Morgan proving to be stronger than Lee had anticipated. After a brief but intense altercation, both Lee and Morgan tumble
roll out of the window. While Lee struggles to her feet, Morgan swiftly makes her way to the waiting car where Amy is and drives off, leaving Lee behind. Acting swiftly, Lee jumps into her car and gives chase to Morgan, but she is soon forced to swerve and crashes into a tree. Injured from the impact, Lee struggles out of the car and staggers around before being discovered by Skip. Urging her to get into the car, Skip reassures her that he knows where they are headed. Determined, Skip drives them to the lake, convinced that this is where Morgan is taking Amy. As they approach the car that Morgan and Amy had used to escape, parked in the middle of the forest, Lee quickly exits the vehicle and takes Skip's rifle, determined to track down Morgan. Following Morgan's trail, Lee spots her standing by the edge of the lake, seemingly captivated by something in front of her. Suddenly, gunshots ring out from behind them, and Morgan realizes that she is being pursued by Lee, prompting her to locate her in the forest. Sneaking up behind her, Morgan launches an attack against Lee, and the two begin to fight, Lee matching Morgan's speed and strength. After a devastating fight that leaves both of them bruised and battered, Lee is impaled on a tree branch. Thinking Lee was dead, Morgan returned to the lake where Amy was waiting for her. Unaware of Lee's survival, Morgan lowers her guard, allowing Lee to sneak up on her and push her into the lake. Lee then jumps in and forcefully drowns Morgan, holding her down as she struggles, then finally stops. Jumping out of the water, Lee grabs the fallen gun and shoots Amy, letting her drop into the lake with her fallen friend. While returning to the car, Lee finds Skip waiting by the car, and when he starts asking questions, she shoots him in the head as well. At Sinsect headquarters, a high-ranking executive and Lee's supervisor engage in a hushed conversation about the recent incident. They reach a consensus that the unfortunate event serves as validation of the company's earlier L4 project superiority, and it is revealed that Lee was the prototype for that model. As the discussion progresses, the executive asks about Lee and her supervisor responds with certainty, describing her as perfect. Later, we see Lee sitting alone in the dinner, mimicking the same gestures Morgan once had. 